Hello! In the previous video, I show my process of sculpting in Blender, and today I'm going to show you how from this we can get this. So, here we go! Here we are in Anycubic Workshop, preparing and slicing all these pieces for 3D printing. I'm using Anycubic Photon LSD based 3D printer, my dearest fiancé bought this printer in 2020. So this old body from the older generation of resin printers, and I'm afraid they don't even sell this particular guy anymore, but anyway, he's working just slowly. After two years of heavy use, it's still holding pretty well. I'm happy with it. Now we need to wait, it will take about two and a half hours, and meanwhile, let's say hi to Luna! Look at her, she's super sweet, she's an amazing cat, I love her. And we back to 3D printer. Let's check how everything is going. Well, unfortunately I can see some failing in dress. It happens. Let's wait until the whole process is finished so we can see how bad it is. For the cleaning I'm using a pretty minimalistic setup, just some sturdy gloves, container, plastic spatula and some isopropyl alcohol. I'm trying to carefully remove here all pieces from the plate because, you know, we don't want to break anything, don't we? These details are just fine, don't worry. As you can see, I love to use RAF for my models in 3D printing because it allows me to remove everything in one piece, which is super handy. Checking on the dress one more time. Well, this patient can be safe. At least the rest looks acceptable. Let's remove supports and quickly check if all parts fit. Seems like gods of 3D printing on our side, and everything worked just right. Right? Clean model from Lizzie. I'm using isopropyl alcohol and pulverizer. And now it's time for some fancy looking cyberpunk inspired shots. I forgot to mention another little life hack. I recommend using Nile files or very light sandpaper for polishing models right after printing. The only thing what you need to remember is that 3D print at this point is super delicate, so please just don't push too much pressure. I'm checking again how the hair parts are matching up. Let's start the fun part! Assembling! Even though I printed a new dress, it didn't fit because I forgot to adjust it in Blender. Well, at least the rest works more or less, okay? Maybe I just need to do some minor fixes here and there, which is brings me to the next part. Polishing. To fix my mistakes, I'm using the rotary tool. I have a Power Plus rotary tool, works just fine for me. So let's fix this dress. I just need to make it a bit wider from the inside. I tried this poor, but this poor thing struggled to remove any parts of the print. So I choose the bigger guy. And yes, now we're talking. And just look at this amount of dust. If you're working with this drill, try to use a respirator. On these pandemic days, I'm pretty sure you have at least one at home. Look, you definitely don't want this dust to be inside your lungs. So, the last check-in. Now everything fits perfectly. Look at our little Anja! 
Well, there's still some imperfections here and there, so for the next step I will need some epoxy. Here I'm using three forms called from Spoon. There are two parts of epoxy, we need to mix part A and part B at the same proportion, and after that they have about one and a half hours for the work. After it dries it gets super hard, so it can easily be drilled, sanded, do whatever you want with this, it will stick there forever. <laughs> so it works pretty fine for me and I definitely recommend this epoxy. I think it's pretty good for work. Also, you can mix it with water if you need really smooth looking look. Huh? <laughs> okay, the only thing, please wear the gloves. Uh, and in, in description says this epoxy can cause allergic reaction and skin irritation. And I'm pretty sure you don't want that. <laughs> Keep your hands healthy and beautiful. Meanwhile, I fixed the tail, one of her eye, and did some minor changes in her hair. And look who came to cheer me up! Her name is Ellie, and she's the most adorable puppy. Okay, while our parts are getting dry, let's make her eyes. This time I decided to make something special. Usually I'm simply printing the whole face with eyes and then painting them. But this time... I want to make resin epoxy eyes. So I printed here several eyeballs, just in case I will, if I will screw up several of them. And I just attached them to some random paper and sprayed them with white acrylic paint. I'm using acrylic paint from Liquitex, grabbing several different tones, blue, green. Let's just experiment with that and see which one will be the nicest one. As a small experiment, I added some glitters. Let's try to add some spark to her eyes. I'm using this super cheap UV resin from Aliexpress. Some people say that this UV is getting yellow with time, but I didn't have such a problem so far after using this one for more than one year. Uh, I often have some little bubbles dropped in the UV resin and previously I was using some needle and was just popping all these bubbles one by one. But recently I learned actually pretty interesting and cool trick. Use a matchsticks to make all these bubbles rise and pop. You know, it's pretty quick and convenient trick, so highly recommend to use it. In the end just form a dome for the eyeball and we are done! I love how it looks! Look at that! This extra depth makes her eyes so shiny and it seems generally alive, don't you think? Oh, okay, all parts are already dry, so we're ready for painting! I will be using an airbrush because, you know, it's easier to control the amount of paint and if I need some gradients it will be much more effective. My airbrush is very generic and simple, but it's enough for me. I'm using some homemade paint. I'm planning to buy some proper airbrush acrylic paints, but for this time I'm using some cheap one. For now, let's make some base. Unfortunately, I added here too much thinner, which is by the way also homemade thinner. <laughs> But yeah, I'm afraid my base color turned out into base water. <laughs> uh, no. Let's just wait while it will dry and try again. But this time, let's do paint from scratch. So I already have a yellow in my airbrush paint palette. 
but this yellow is too warm. So let's make a proper shade. I make this paint with liquid X paint, with blue and with some white and blending them all together. The consistency should feel like sour cream, kind of, or something like that. And then in the end I'm adding some thinner, which is basically just a mix of isopropyl alcohol and distillate water, like 50-50. can see all the tiny imperfections of 3D printing. For example, here you can clearly see layers of 3D printing. Or here all pimples from supports and again these terrible terrible layers. So that's why my next step is to send 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 all of this. I use on paper 180 grit and then 280 for polishing. Usually for my needs it's more than enough. And after sanding is done, time for another coat of paint. For the dress I have a special plan. I know her dress should be like white, but I want it to be orange in the shadow, so for that I'm painting the whole dress orange and red, and later I will add some white color like with this dry brush technique. You know, I know it looks terrible right now, but bear with me, it will look sweet in the end. Painting her little panties with a brush. I don't worry about the brush strokes here because <laughs> nobody's going to look under her dress. I hope. Right? Let's do her face! After watching many many videos from Monster High doll repaints, I decided to try some of the techniques from these creators, so I grabbed all the colored pencil that I can find at home and some pastels. Maybe my pastel was too dry, but I didn't like how it looks, honestly. I also tried pencil, but they were just scratching the paint, so I decided to go back to acrylic paint. Besides, she has very strong makeup, so it's going to look nice, I hope. So, painting her eyeliner, and also lips, nose, adding some little accents here and there. Aligner to be very glossy so it will create this, you know, cheeky look. <laughs> and of course, glitters! Hmm, sorry, I just love shiny stuff and cannot resist adding a few flakes to her eyelids. Yeah! And paint the rest! I found this brand of paint recently, very nice metallic colors, so why not to try it on her bracelets? And another of my recent discovery is a liquid leaf. It's made of 
of two parts, golden dust and some varnish. The smell is terrible, but the final result is outstanding. I, I just love golden leaf. My god, it's one of my favorite medium. But it's so uncomfortable if you're trying to apply this to some little figurine. But this thing, this liquid leaf, is amazing. Look, I just add this varnish and then simply add this golden dust and how shiny it is! Just look, look, look! Oh my god! I swear, I tried so many golden acrylic paints and gilded wax, but this thing is beating all of them. Oh, by the way, let's finish her pose! To leave her with this flat color, so I will add some shadow. Let's make some yellow, orange, maybe a little bit of blue, and boom! We have our color for shadows. And while I'm painting here, let me make kind of like a confession here. <laughs> Honestly, I don't like traditional painting. <gasps> painting with acrylic always makes me anxious. I'm, I'm so afraid to make colors too dirty or too dim or too dark. After working in CG for more than 10 years, it's so painful to go back to traditional media. In, I mean, in digital art, all you have is all this freedom to use any colors and consistently experimenting in process. But here, if something goes wrong, there's no way to fix it. And, oh my god, I'm panicking every time when I'm adding a color to my process. But, you know, at the same time, it's so rewarding to see when you do something and it goes beyond your expectations. Oh, look! While we were talking, we are almost done here. Last but not least, I'm working on her hair. I started with black and then just studied some different colors and highlights. Just to speed up the process, I'm constantly using here the fan to dry layers faster. And as you can see, her hair still didn't align up perfectly. But you know, at this point I was already in the state like, oh my god, please, I just want to finish you. I don't want to spend an hour, ten hours on fixing you or doing something. Let's let let's just go with this. So I left it just like that. After all, I don't think it looks so bad. What do you think? Also, if you want to print this model, she will be available in the description below. And of course, I use liquid leaf for her golden decorations. Oh my god, it's so shiny. I, I, I just love it. Remix varnish and gold dust just to see if there's any difference in applying this material, and the result is not so opaque as a previous version. I mean, the one which I tried on her necklace, but you know, it still works. You, you can make it in several layers, and I love this medium. Oh my god, I'm definitely going to use it in my following projects. By the way, if you're interested, in any material what I use here during the video, they all will be listed in the description, and if I forgot something, just ping me. And now it's time for the final assembling and presentation. 
So here it is, my little Anka. I love her eyes. Oh my god, they're so shiny and look so alive. I hope this video was entertaining beside my terrible Russian accent. So let me know who you want to see next. She, I mean, she definitely needs some friends. Maybe some other villager? Hmm? Now like, subscribe. You're not the first day on YouTube, you know what to do. And for now, I wish you all the best and have a great day. Пока-пока!